Now, Labour has ramped up the pressure on the government over its controversial recommendation of a 1% pay increase for NHS staff. Yeah, the party are aiming to put nurses' pay and social care at the heart of their local election campaign, which launches today. And we're joined now by the Deputy Labour leader, Angela Rayner. Good morning to you, Angela. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, so, look, let's start here. Uh, uh, we've just been talking about it. I'm not sure whether you heard, but Dr Hillary uh, talking about how angry he is about the idea of this 1% pay rise. I don't think there's many people around the country this morning that aren't waking up feeling like, actually, do you know what, for everything that our nurses and our frontline key staff have done within the NHS, 1% does not feel like a rise in any way, shape or form. Um, and it seems as though nurses may well go on the picket line as well regarding this issue. Uh, what's your position on this and how do you feel like you're going to be able to get the government to roll back and change their minds? Well, I think the government have to listen and they have to listen not just to our NHS heroes who have been on the front line, as you say, for the past 12 months, but also to the general public. They um, legislated for double the amount they're offering now. They budgeted for double the amount they're offering now. So I think it's a real kick in the teeth for our NHS workers who have worked really hard. And it's a real terms pay cut for those workers. So the choice couldn't be clearer. Send a message to the government in May that under Labour, you'll get the pay rise for the NHS under the Tories, you're getting a real terms pay cut and they're cutting funding to the NHS yeah. and they're taxing families. OK, so let's talk about what it would be if you're going to get the pay rise that you would like under Labour. How much would you offer the nurses and those frontline NHS staff? Well, I think the starting point has to be the 2.1% that was budgeted for, you know, why the government have removed that now when the NHS workers have worked so hard for us, I think is a real slap in the face for them. So I think it's disgraceful two, uh, and it's a broken you would, promise. You would, you would start there. You'd say that it would be at least 2.1%. In fact, we would like to see it more because what we know is that that 1% pay rise would cost the NHS £500 million. Were it to go up to 5%, and a few people have suggested it should be at least 5%, that then cost the NHS £1.7 billion. There's huge implications for this pay rise. We all want to find a solution that, that we feel is appropriate, but understanding the implications of that is, is a very, very important part of the, sort of the financial management of the NHS budget, isn't it? Of course, and you know, one of the frustrations for me, really, is when the government are saying they can't afford this pay rise for the NHS workers, when they've spent £2.6 on their flat, doing up their flat, given a pay rise to Dominic Cummings, who everyone will remember the Bernard Castle incident during lockdown, it really does smack people uh, in the face, our NHS workers, because there has been billions of money that has been wasted by this government on their vanity projects and on, um, you know, failed systems like the test, track and trace in the private sector. So the real frustration for me, and if you look at how well the rollout of the vaccine's gone, that's because of our NHS staff and our workers oh. in the public sector. And the frustration for me is those staff are now looking at a pay cut, whereas others have been rewarded for not being successful. And I think that's incredibly frustrating for the general public and for those NHS workers that have been on the front line. I think nobody's going to disagree with you with that. It is just the brass tax, isn't it? It's getting down to the basics of the money. I mean, you mentioned uh, 2.6 million that has been wasted. I mean, that's a fraction of the 500 million that a 1% pay rise is going to cost. So what would you cut in order to give more to nurses and staff that you believe and have argued so strongly deserve it? Well, it's not just that. There's been plenty of waste over this period. You know, Matt Hancock gave his pub landlord mate a couple of billion. Um, we've had 37 billion on a test track and trace system. There's been so much money that has been squandered in a, in a way that the public scrutiny has not been there. They've already been told by the courts the way in which they hand and doled out contracts was unacceptable. And yet our NHS nurses and our NHS key workers are not going to get the pay rise that the government had budgeted for even. So I think... You know, when you look at it so in, those, in that gone context, wrong it's completely in the budgeting, unacceptable. Uh, yeah, and obviously you, you would argue that a Labour government wouldn't have made those squanderings you just highlighted. But seeing as they have been made, what would you now cut in order to make sure they have the pay rise? It's not about cuts. I think if you look at the situation that we've been in and the pandemic, okay, let me the money, rephrase. The money what would has you been, take money, money away the money from has been to found. reallocate? If you look at the... If you look at the tax cuts to some of um, big business, the, the, you know, the support that's been given there, then that's fine. But the money's been found. Our NHS workers have put their lives on the line. The government budgeted for double the amount they're now offering to our NHS key workers. I think that's disgraceful. They should at least honour 
what they said they promised the NHS workers they would get back at the start of this pandemic. Sorry, Angela, I, 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 I totally hear your passion and I think we all share it for the nurses getting served. But, but, you know, you do need to give a little bit more specifics. You know, money will have to be reallocated, won't it, if you don't like the word cut. So where would you reallocate it from? Well, we'd make savings by not squandering money on contracts with people that have got no experience working in that sector. There's been a huge amount of waste over this period. And, you know, that will come out. We've seen some of that with the court case recently, that the way in which these, the government has handed out these contracts, billions of pounds, and yet at the same time, they budgeted, they know their budgets, they know the money that's in the Treasury, they budgeted for double the amount that they're offering no, NHS workers now. Sorry. So they should at least be able to give the NHS workers the amount they promised them. No, That's I, about I totally fairness. hear That's your argument on that. And NHS as I say, now. I think everybody agrees with it. But going back to the past where things have been wasted, it's always different in hindsight, isn't it? The government would argue that they didn't know that money was going to be wasted. They thought they were trying to get a test and trace system working. People might take issue with what they did and have done, and it's been proved that it didn't go well and shouldn't have gone in the way that it did. But when you look at things and you look at waste, for instance, one of the things you've been accused of is putting in an expensive claim for your AirPods. Now, you might argue that that was necessary in a tech world when you're trying to operate in lockdown, but it doesn't look good and it's very easy to point the finger, isn't it? Well, two, £249 on a pair of AirPods so that I can carry out my job, which on average I use uh, four hours a day now mm. on Zooms, is nowhere near billions of pounds that has been wasted on contracts to people with no experience whatsoever. So my answer is that we wouldn't mismanage the finances going forward. We would ensure that the management of the finances is prudent, as it should be because it's taxpayers' money, and that we reward the workers that have been on the front line putting their lives at risk and give them the pay rise that they deserve. I think, Angela, that the, the idea of AirPods or, or he, he, air, excuse me, headphones uh, that you can use for £249 for a lot of people this morning would say, but that's an extraordinary expensive. You need good AirPods. We understand you need good headphones if you're going to be on Zooms for four hours a day, but there are far more cost-effective uh, ways of trying to do that. And £240, and we're led to believe that they were personalised earpods. I'm not sure if they were or not. <clears throat> does sound a very expensive uh, piece of tech. Well, I mean, we can all debate uh, how much the tech costs and anyone who's got Apple devices will know if you don't buy the Apple accessories, then it won't support it on the devices. And, you know, I've got personal devices like my iMac, etc., which I've bought myself, which I use for work and my phone, etc. So actually, it was about making sure that there was a balance in terms of what I use for work, which is what I've purchased in line with the expenses, like many others, including Matt Hancock, yep. who did exactly the same. And many any other MPs have, and if people, you know, FOI, they would know that. Um, I've, I've completely complied with all the rules on that, and I think, like I say, I using Matt, airports right, so that Han I can have Matt confidential did, meetings you're, you're absolutely is, right. is, mo is not the same as squandering billions of no, pounds by giving it to your pub landlord. You've, you've brought up Matt Hancock, and you're right, he did put in a claim. His were £159, though, uh, so they were considerably cheaper than yours. Uh, so, and, and, of course, there are other headphones that do work with those devices, too, that yeah, are I've on a range of prices. Yeah, I've got some cheap ones. They work fine for me, but maybe my cause aren't as important as yours. <laughs> I don't know. But just in case you wanted to go cheaper next time, there are other ones out there. I think the principle is, 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 is the look of, of indulgence across the board from all parties doesn't play well and you still haven't actually said how going forward, apart from saying that you would manage the finances generally better, which all people trying to get elected say, don't they? Every single potential person in opposition always says, we'll do it better than the last lot did. But in order to get elected, you have to give a sense of what you would do and how you would find that money for the nurses. Of and course, and like, like I said, the government are budgeted for double the amount they're offering now. So you could argue that the government's mismanagement and waste that they've um, created over this period has cost our key workers who have put their lives on the line at the same time when the Prime Minister is spending £2.6 million on doing up his flat. So, I mean, I think if you ask the general yeah. public, they would be very frustrated in that. They budgeted for double the amount that they're offering the NHS workers now. That's wrong. They should give them that money that they promised them.
Um, can we... Well, one last thing we'd like to ask. We know we've got to let you go. We appreciate you, your time this morning as ever, but the, the really tragic news that mm. people will be waking up to this morning is the sort of the ongoing case of Sarah Everard, her abduction, and also the fact that police have found uh, a body or, or what looks like human remains. Uh, there was an extraordinary outpouring of, of uh, experiences online last night that I was bewildered and, and sort of shocked to read an experience of women sharing their experiences of, of things that they have to do to deal with just walking around and dealing with everyday life, uh, whether it's walking home late at night, the clothes that they wear, the shoes that they wear, whether they put headphones in, whether they don't put headphones in, having keys in their mm -hmm. hand, texting updates of where they are so their loved ones know uh, where and they are. And then the worry of having the phone in the hand. Is having the phone in that. I, I know that you uh, were responded to that last night as well, it's something undoubtedly that, that you can relate to and, and is, a, is a big question for all of us, isn't there, this morning, is how have we got to this position where fe women feel so uh, scared and concerned with just walking about and going about their everyday life, trying to get to work, trying to get home from work, just wanting to go out, just wanting to enjoy being outside for a period? Yeah, and my thoughts are with Sarah's family and friends this morning. It must be really devastating news for them. And, you know, I've often had my phone in my hands when I'm walking, um, especially at night, and, you know, stayed on, on the line to people so that, you know, I feel that little bit more safer. And you do feel... Um, and there will be many women and girls that feel unsafe um, after hearing what's happened over the last couple of days. And, and that is sad. And, you know, people um, do feel vulnerable at night and unfortunately that is the case we've had just had international women's day and we've got domestic violence uh, you know soaring in the united kingdom especially during this pandemic and women are feeling unsafe and it's something that we need to tackle it is i mean uh, i think there's a lot of fear around generally in the pandemic doesn't it and it feeds into all areas um, uh, dame president dick of course um has said it's very rare abduction but that doesn't necessarily stop the fear, does it? And we were talking, weren't we, about some freshers at university were given out sort of details of various things they could do in the area. And yeah, some vouchers rape for alarms. restaurants. They were given uh, Sad, clubs they could join position. and a rape alarm. Just standard. There you go. That's your rape alarm. This is welcome to university. Yeah, I mean, that must be, you know, in that context, it's incredibly frightening. But, you know, many women and girls have felt like that for a very long time. And unfortunately, it's not spoken about enough in terms of that perception of fear. And a lot of that is because of the gender based violence that many women and girls do yeah. face at the moment. And, you know, we have to talk about that. We have to talk about how women and girls feel. And it shouldn't be placed upon them to keep themselves safe. We should be looking at a society that think that um, that still too many men think it's okay to abuse women.